little bit different today, guys. Um, I'm going to be looking at 3D printing today. Now, it's not a novel thing, and I do apologise for that, but it's been done in an interesting way with this, and so I think it might be worth looking at, um, just in the context of the application. So, my last video was looking at MPaint Pro, that painting program that I built for advanced computers, and this is taking that one step further to include printing, which is sort of a nice feature. Um, how do you print things like that? Well, we do 3D printing, of course, which is the way that we've done this. So, um, we'll just take a look off, sort of, uh, first off, I'll just show you like, some of the changes to MPaint Pro, and then I'll just show you what this thing can do. So... So this is no different to how it was beforehand. Um, it runs much the same way as it did before, and the display is quite the same. Um, but there's a few things that are a little bit different. First off, you'll see here that the keyboard shortcuts are largely gone. They're still there, but instead we now have drop-down menus. So you can just select what you want to, like painting. So you can just go to the tool that you want, or you can just click out if you don't want anything. There are extensive help files now, so if you get stuck, you can just read through here as well. Um, this gives you some information about what you're looking for here. Just quit whenever you want to. There are also a few new things like um, this blueprint display mode. So this is new right off the cap. Um, and I mean, the idea of this here is just because it's difficult to um, to see sometimes where everything is and how far things are apart. So this just gives you a nice grid that you can look at and uses that to be able to roughly tell how far away things are and use that for general blueprinting stuff. So that's a nice little feature uh, of the ones that are there. So um, we've just got a simple blueprint here for a house, and this is based on the um, villager huts we have here. These villagers are getting a bit overly prolific, so I might have to cull their population at some point. Anyway, um, but you can see here that we've got this sort of nice house like this. It's fairly simple in design, and you can see we've just recreated that um, in MP Pro. So that's the, the ground floor, of course, and then you have um, the walls outside of it, the windows, and then the top floor and the area there. Now, I actually think that I've made a mistake in this blueprint because I think, yes, there should actually be a hole there. There we are. Okay, so as you can see, it's very easy to make these blueprints. It just takes a couple of seconds just drawing things up. Um, I'll just quickly save that. There we are. Um, now, when you're ready and you want to start printing, you just go to the print. So we go File, Print. It'll just find printers and we come to this display here. Now, I've got two printers hooked up. One is here um, and one is over here. So both of them are there ready to go. So we just select which one we want to. This one, for example, is called House 1. That one's called House 2, I think. So you can just click on the one that you're looking for and you can choose it. So I'm going to go House 1, which is just the easiest one here as well. Um, the colours here now represent slots in the total inventory. So you can see, for example, white represents slot 1, which is that slot there, and you know, orange is slot 2, pink is slot 3, and so on and so forth like that. Um, now, when you start a printing job, you want to know how much stuff needs to go into the slot, so you just hit this button, this thing here, and that'll change to count, and you can now see. So, for example, you need 61 bits of white, of yellow, which in this case is just sandstone, 31 is of the cut sandstone, we've got um, some brown here, which I think is the, uh, yeah, that'll be the, the fencing, the top there, and uh, three for glass. So we can just quickly do that now, so we'll just dig out those supplies, so sandstone, cut, we'll just get lots, but we're doing this in creative, so it's just nice and easy. Uh, glass panes, and I think it was fencing. There we are. All right, very easy. So now we just put them in the right slots. So, excuse me. Um, that's that slot there. That's slot f five and four, respectively. So, <coughs> I think brown is slot thirteen from memory. It is cool. And now I'll let you just turn on the printer and see what happens. Um, now, the printing has two actual displays. First off, the printer, you can see he's, he's often doing his, his little thing there as well, so you can actually just watch him as he prints. Um, there are two orientations I forgot to mention. Um, one of them is, is it's to do with the layering. So the first one is like ground up, so that means that for each frame you make, this is like an overhead view of the frame. But you can also have it so like this is a front view of the frame, and he works his way backwards, and that's called forward layering. So depending on the kind of layering you want to use, it depends on what sort of result you have um, from the actual the building itself. So that's quite a nice feature. You'll also see here that, so you have an idea what's going on, you can actually track the turtle's movements. Um, which you'll see happening there, and you'll just yeah move from left to right and just sort of slow. So that way you have an idea what the turtle's doing, where he goes and things. Uh, as you can tell, there is a limitation to his inventory, and you'll hit that. This building, I think, comes just under, but there will be buildings that where you have to reload it several times. And in that instance, the computer will just stop you, say, I'm sorry, but you're out of materials. In fact, we can actually test that. So we'll just steal that chiseled stone there. So when he needs it next, there we are. Yeah, it'll just give you a little message telling you to exhaust that. You keep clicking, it won't do anything. So you just have to put in the resource for slots 2, and then go, and off it goes again. So, nice little interface there as well. Now, um, as you may be able to recognise, there are some fairly serious limitations with this 
implementation of the application and uh, they're very hard to get around so there are limitations significant limitations to the sorts of things that you can build first off you'll see I haven't used stairs where these buildings have used stairs um, I haven't used doors or ladders either now the reason for that as you can see is that the turtle will just go through in a methodical sort of sweep um, building parts of building by building um, and there's no information for orientation now stairs do have an orientation if you build them upwards the stairs will be upside down otherwise it'll be straight ways up um, and also depending on what direction you're facing is what direction the stairs will come out as well. So that's a serious consideration that is just too hard to program into MPaint Pro without changing the file format, which I'm just not prepared to do at this point. So unless there's significant demand for it, um, that's a feature that's not going to be implemented. However, we can, like I say, because it's what the printer's doing, you can just very quickly lock up the stairs and the door and the ladders yourself. It's easy enough to do. Uh, redstone it is. We are. He will have defenses, fine. Uh, fencing gates won't, though. Fencing gates also require an orientation. So, yeah, I mean, it does depend on the sorts of things you can do. He's just going to build that now. But as you can see, that is an absolute... Oh, he didn't even have a door. That makes things easier. Um, but, yeah, as you can see, that is an absolute replica of the place next to it, um, barring the furnishings that you can add yourself. So, yeah, um, it's a nice feature. And then he'll just quickly reset himself, and you're back ready to do more printing. So, yeah, and you'll see there. Printing was successful, and that's it. You're done. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much how the system works. I could now spend another hour or so just dryly talking through how that can be done um, with various things. I think it's much more fun to watch it. So, um, yeah, I'll show you what this thing can do.
see you next time.